Hello and welcome back. More Archer Space Patrol radios. Real ones this time from 1980. Uh, this pair I picked up off of eBay very, very cheaply, in fact, for the sum of £1.99. So these deals are out there. Um, these claim to have a torque range of up to a quarter of a mile. Anyone that's used these type of radios before will know that's incredibly dubious. Um, but these items, um, as you can see, they're purchased from Radio Shack 40 years ago for $9.95. Again, not UK legal radios. These would have been shipped into the UK in some way. Uh, anyway, uh, the first radio out of the box seemed to be in fairly good condition. Um, my often take on these kids' radios very often is that, that, that there are two brothers that own them, or two sisters or whatever, or a brother and a sister, and, uh, and one of them may look after the radio better than the other. So you often do find this, where you have one that's in very good nick and one that certainly isn't. So anyway, this was the better of the two, which has a nice fully functioning antenna and appears to be in fairly good nick all round. Um, there was always evidence radios, 40-year-old radios, of them being tampered with. I mean, kids often, very often, will just take them apart just to see what's inside them. Like all of the Space Patrol radios, these are a wonder of economical circuit design, as we're about to find out. The, the second uh, radio, unfortunately, as you can see here, has a, uh, has a broken antenna. And uh, but otherwise, uh, it appears on the outset to be okay. But I thought I would take this one apart first to see exactly what was wrong with it because there certainly was more evidence on this one that it had been taken apart before. Anyway, uh, looking at the unit itself, um, it, there doesn't seem to be much other than the antenna at the moment that's cause for concern. Now, normally, an antenna breaking on, on uh, a handset would be a problem. On these radios, it's less so because um, th this particular length antenna is much more easy to get hold of. Anyway, the, this uh, radio suffered from the usual problem of the dry switch contacts there, leading to quite a high resistance when I measured it off the back. So I cleaned up the contacts and, and this is a, a good tip for you if you ever struggle to get an antenna out. I've always used this trick by screwing a wood screw into the end of it of the antenna until it picks up and then you can pull out the sections that have been pressed inside. It's a trick that's always worked for me anyway. So um, unfortunately this antenna is, is a little bit broken. For the testing we've sold it in a piece of copper just for now. Um, I decided to change the capacitors in the radio just really because um, they are 40 years old. Um, so I took them all out, but they all seemed okay, apart from one or two, which were a little bit high, but uh, I did it anyway. And um, you can see there we've got rid of the crackling problem that the switch originally had, which is, I do this before I even try it normally because it's a problem. Anyway, there was no evidence of any tampering on the inductor. If you're ever using, going to do the um, mods on with these inductors, always use a ceramic tool. Uh, it's much safer. And I tuned these down. They had drifted quite a way up uh, the band there. So I tuned these down, um, start off the SDR there, so that they were on frequency. They're about a meg out. So... Um, on this particular radio, the transmit was bad, so I changed all three transistors. On these radios, they use all three transistors for transmit and receive, and just use the, uh, the on receive, the crystal is actually disconnected and becomes a regen RF amplifier. And you can actually pick that up there. You can actually see that on the, the meter there. We're picking up the receive side. <laughs> and uh, uh, so obviously there's definitely something wrong. But the power on this radio is a lot better than on the radio where I didn't change the transistors, which is interesting. Um, so this was the radio where I didn't change the tra transistors. So I've obviously picked up a bit more transmit gain. Now, viewers that will know, will know my original signal generator that I used to use is broken. So I thought, well, why not try using a function generator? Because I know there are only si this one is only 60 meg in particular, but most of my testing is done well below that. So I looked into using one of these uh, inexpensive function generators, and they are very, very good, I have to say. And with this particular generator, you can modulate a carrier signal on, onto it, uh, the signal as well, FM or AM or whatever you like. In fact, there's a, there's a number of options. So I tested the function generator on the, um, on the SDR there and got it on frequency. And we got a nice tone going in the background. I won't annoy you with that just at the minute. And um, we, we got it connected up to the radio. Now, on here, you can see we've got it set for AM and we're just adjusting the, the amplitude of that signal up a bit. I've also got it running through a 30 dB attenuator there as well. So we can gradually see as I increase the amplitude from the signal generator that the signal is peaking up 
on the SDR unit there. So with this and a decade resistance box, you can, I mean, you don't need a decade resistance box, box to test these walkie talkies because they are incredibly deaf. The biggest problem with all of these cheap radios is receive, not transmit. So anyway, we're sticking a one volt uh, signal there straight in through a 30 dB attenuator, just to show you there how you adjust the, uh, adjust the amplitude on this unit. And, um, I'll do a separate video if anyone's interested in using one of these. There's a bit of a trick into getting the tone working on these. So anyway, I decided to check the uh, the radio sensitivity. Uh, so I've got this connected up to the first radio. Now this is the radio with the decent antenna. And as you can see, we're putting quite a stonking signal. That's uh, 21 millivolts. <laughs> but it's going through a 30 dB attenuator, but it's only there that we just about, as you can hear, we just about hear the tone coming in. Um, so that would say, well, I, well, I mean, you, I could do the sums and tell you exactly how sensitive that is, but, uh, but uh, it's not really very sensitive at all. It's a deaf as a post, um, but it's not as bad as the second radio. And like I say, this is the problem with these toy radios. It's very often the receive that lets them down and not the transmit side. The transmit side, as we'll test a little bit later on, uh, is a lot better than the receive side. So, because it's, re it's regenerative receive on these. So you can see the signal was so strong that the SDR there was even picking the signal up with the lead just laying on the table and the radio was uh, was struggling. So anyway, I connected up the second radio with the uh, bit of copper for the antenna there. And um, with that same level signal, it wasn't picking anything up whatsoever. So on this particular, I mean, I've changed the transistors in this and there is definitely a problem in receive. It's probably around that four way, the four contacts on that switch, I would imagine. But uh, I can't spend uh, too much time trying to sort this out. As you can imagine, it takes a while. So anyway, we wound the signal right the way up on this and it was still receiving nothing. Um, so there is definitely a receive problem with this radio that I just, it's just not cost, cost effective for me to sort out. I've changed the transistor, changed the capacitors and you know, for a radio that's, I mean, look, we've got four volts going through 30 dB attenuator there, and yeah, not so good. And the signal again, well, it's re, -ray re radiating the signal out of the antenna, of course, but we're, we're getting a huge signal on the SDR <laughs> as well. So, uh, so yeah, so that uh, there's just more to show you really that you can use these function generators to um and you can you can use these and then once you've got your settings you can save them which is really useful i've been using that feature a lot and you can load in waveforms from your pc and everything so these are a wonderful little tool if all you mainly do is test cbs and you test um walkie talkies because to be honest i don't really test any uhf or vhf gear so um for me this was all i really needed actually in the end i wish i'd have known that before anyway the signal here was so strong that uh uh, I set it to four volts there through the, the attenuator and it could pick it up nicely off the first radio but the second radio the one with the broken antenna that it's not getting anything um, so anyway I picked up a packet of antennas from eBay these were very very cheap a pound each and this one is for a dab radio but with those you can simply remove the um, the angle end piece and just use them in the radio so and because I've got the 3d printer I can always make little brackets and things to adapt these to fit most handsets so they're a very good buy so I removed the hinge piece from the bottom of it and uh, you can see that it's almost made to fit now with that angled connector and I 3d printed a little adapter bracket just to hold it nice and firmly in place there that little gray, uh, gray piece of plastic you can see poked in the side there and this antenna is seven mils the same diameter so it fits nicely in the case when the case is shut and uh, yeah of course I also 3d printed a top piece for the antenna as well so it matches the other radio pretty closely so I think for the money that you know I didn't want to spend too much money or time that's all that uh, I needed to do with these so anyway let's take these outside for a little test we're gonna do a radio to scanner test with these so we're not testing the receive on these because we already know they're pretty awful but we will I think at least test the transmit uh, between these radios and the Jupiteru scanner there with Tyler so let's pop uh, down the road and just see how we get on Right, we've cho chosen a really cold Christmas Eve to come out and test walkie-talkies. We're in our usual little short-range test spot. I don't think these are going to do great things, but we're going to test them with the scanner just to show you it's really the receive that lets these radios down and not the transmit. Right, we'll send Tyler off before he freezes. And a quick ground spot. 
So we've swapped radios over, we swapped them over, and this is the one with the better receive. So that's working better. So what we'll do, because the other radio, we can't really do a radio to radio test very much because Tyler won't hear me. We'll use the more powerful one just to see what the range is down to the end. Right, we've got the Upateru scanner here and we'll see if we can hear Tyler on the scanner. He's just down there, about halfway down the path. And there's no way radio to radio, I don't think we'd be able to do it, so. A quarter of a mile, it certainly isn't. A quick round box over with a lazy dog. See, that's a half decent signal there and he's right the way back there. Right, we'll send him down to the end. Yeah, so that's about the limit of the range on transmit to the to the scanner. So yeah, quarter of a mile, I don't think they're definitely going to do quarter of a mile. So he is there, but he's very distant. So that's Tyler trying the Morse code. That's the Morse code key. <laughs> so that signal's carrying a lot better anyway. Right, well, I think we've proven that these are incredibly short range radios, even to the scanner. A uh, little bit of, uh, of alignment and messing around. I'm sure we could get the receive working better, but like I say, it's not really worth it. Um, you know, these radios are getting on for 40 years old now and they are what they are, but we have lots of fun with them. Um, anyway, I'd just like to say a, a big thank you to all of you if you've subscribed and if you've watched the videos this year. Uh, me and Tyler have had a lot of fun making them. We've got a lot more uh, content coming up in the new year. Uh, we're working on a few, um, making up a few walkie-talkies from famous mo movies and things like that. You've already seen the walkie-talkies from the Back to the Future movies and they're looking really nice now. Um, and yeah, we've got some really good tests coming on some older sets as well and some brand new radios, uh, Japanese radios as well, coming through the system. So um, I hope you all have a happy holidays and uh, hopefully next year uh, is going to be a little bit better than this year. Um, so uh, what would you like to say, Tyler? Thanks for watching everyone. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.